Good morning to one and all. Welcome here to the Church of the Immaculate Conception. My name is Father James Peterson, the pastor here at IC. On behalf of the family, I want to thank you so much for your presence here, your prayers, for your love and support. We're gathered here with hope and confidence in the midst of the sadness for eternal life, for resurrection, for Leon, and one day for ourselves as well. Uh, just some logistics throughout our liturgical celebration for the day. We'll have different moments to stand and to sit, uh, times for us to reflect upon God's holy word, time to sing from the blue hymnals found in front of you, uh, different opportunities for us to really ask for God's grace and blessings to be with us. So as a people of hope and confidence in God's love and mercy for Leon and for each of us, I invite you to please stand as we have our opening prayer here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. As our brother Leon has died with the Lord, so may he live with him in glory. I'll sprinkle his wonderful urn over here in the shape of a heart with holy water, a reminder of his baptism being drawn with the family of Christ so many years ago. Very appropriate there with the picture where he's uh, seated by water there. He's by a lake, Lake Superior. Lake Superior, very appropriate. Well, we ourselves then reflect upon the waters of life that God leads us through, asking for God's blessings for each and every one of you. So we have our opening hymn found in the blue hymnals, 724, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say, 724. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery your servant Leon, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit God forever and ever. I invite you to be seated for our Liturgy of the Word as those who will help with the readings and come forward. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. But the souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction, but they are in peace. For it before men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastise the little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took, him to, took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with the elect. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I lack. In green pastures he makes me lie down, to still waters he leads me. He restores my soul. He guides me along right paths for the sake of his name. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You set a table before me in front of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Indeed, goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord for endless days. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We do speak a wisdom to those who are mature, but not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages of our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. The word of the Lord. And together let us stand to greet the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite you to be seated. Well, first and foremost, uh, Leon's wife and uh, all of the family and friends gathered here, heartfelt prayers and condolences for you on this day. We're gathered here with gratitude in our hearts for the life and the legacy, the memories you're able to share with Leon here this side of heaven, but also recognizing the sadness that is there and saying goodbye to someone who you journeyed with for years and years, someone who you've gotten to know over the course of your lifetime. So even as a faith-filled people, we have this tinge of sadness, this recognition that there is this absence now. And so it's okay if in these days you've had literal tears and sadness and sorrowful moments, the Lord knows that. We heard there within that responsorial psalm for today that our sacristan and helper with the word John was proclaiming there from Psalm 23, those famous words of the Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing I shall want. Indeed, at times in our lives we are wanting, 
we're wanting for food, for comfort, for strength, for shelter, for different essentials in life. God allows for those things to happen. But indeed, God in the depths of our hearts, he's always watching over us and caring for us. Uh, we heard there within that first reading that was proclaimed there from the book of wisdom, the Old Testament. We heard there that though in the eyes of the world, uh, those go through suffering and, and hardships as, as Leon did and all of us do, uh, nonetheless, God holds each of us as very precious in his sight. And so we ourselves, we heard the voice of Jesus say, as we sang at the beginning there with Dr. Ray, our director of music and liturgy here, we ourselves indeed have heard God's voice speaking to us in the depths of our hearts. Uh, within the gospel for today, from John's gospel, we heard there Jesus speak about those words that our Heavenly Father has given all things to him, including the life of Leon and we ourselves. And so we ourselves, though we have this sadness, we ourselves also have this hopeful perseverance. We heard in that second reading from Scripture, from the first reading there of Paul's letter to the Corinthians, that indeed, eye has not seen, ear has not heard what God has prepared for those who love him. In the conversations I'd had with Leon over the years, uh, over at the home there up of 40th, and here in church at various gatherings, in his heart of hearts, I really do believe he had this love of God and love of neighbor. And it's so, again, appropriate that his urn there is in the shape of a heart. Uh, again, none of us loves God or neighbor perfectly, but God perfectly loves us in the way that he desires to share his grace and fullness. For none of us, again, can anticipate with even the sorrows, the hardships, the challenges, the trials and tribulations of this life, what God has prepared for us. And so we ourselves, we press onward in this life with that hope and confidence of the resurrection, of life anew with the grace of Christ. And so, again, very appropriate there that in the picture of Leon there is by Lake Superior, one of the largest freshwater lakes in the world here in our wonderful state of Minnesota. Uh, we ourselves have that opportunity to reflect upon how God is leading each and every one of us over the waters of life. He journeys with us. He helps us and supports us. He allows for those trials to happen so that we ourselves can be strengthened. Our lives and our faith can be purified. But he wants to ultimately journey with us. Something which uh, you know, I've gotten to know a few years over the years through various events we've had here at IC, including different funerals. Uh, you maybe know, and it may seem like a broken record, but our names are very important to us. And so looking at the name of Leon, uh, it's a name which apparently has its roots in Greek. Uh, it's also in French. Uh, it's all Greek to me at this point, but uh, his name has great significance. It means a lion. And so we ourselves, we know that while a lion can be a ferocious creature, uh, nonetheless, Jesus himself was described as a lion, like the lion of the tribe of Judah, uh, even within one of the uh, depictions of the evangelists, those who share God's holy word, it's depicted as a lion. If you look at the crucifix up there around, we've got the four different figures representing Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the gospel evangelist writer there, inspired by the Holy Spirit of Mark, is depicted as a lion. And so for Leon and for ourselves as well, it's okay to have that strength and that ferocity that comes from the Lord to help us to roar out in the challenges of life. Certainly not with our family and friends. We don't want to lash out at others or bare our teeth. Uh, but we nonetheless, we want to have that strength that comes from Christ, our good shepherd, to give us that encouragement when we ourselves feel low to help us with those around us to keep going on in this life so that one day after our journeys here on earth we would join leon all of our family members and friends those who have gone before us in the heavenly kingdom to be able to praise god there in his grace and mercy forever and ever amen god bless you all I invite you to please stand once again as we have our prayers of the faithful. A response to these prayers will be, hear our prayer. For Leon, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may be admitted to the company of the saints, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That Leon may find joy in knowing the truth be found with our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, that those unable to be with us today may feel supported in their sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for our deceased relatives and friends and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, Lord, in your mercy, for all of us present here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, Lord, in your mercy, for all those prayers you bring before Jesus, our good shepherd, from the depths of your own hearts and souls, your life experiences, Lord, in your mercy, we gather all of these prayers, all those that God knows that we need to sustain us, to strengthen us, to guide us, that we ourselves would continually hear the voice of Christ, our good shepherd. He would lead us onward in this life's journey. We now pray in the powerful and holy words that he himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. I invite you to be seated one more time here. Uh, it's customary within our, our funeral liturgies to have another moment of either incense or, or holy water as a reminder there, a time of prayer and trusting the soul of our loved one to God's merciful hands. And so we'll take this as a, a quiet time of reflection as I sprinkle Leon's urn once again with holy water, asking for God to continually bless his soul now at peace and bless each and every one of you as you press onward in this life's journey. And for one final time, I invite you to please stand. <clears throat> Into your hands, Father of mercies, we command our brother Leon in assurance, certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Leon in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith. Until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I thank you again on behalf of the family for your presence here, for your prayers, your love and support. Um, there will be a luncheon downstairs afterwards, right? And so... There'll be the opportunity to, to gather and to share stories and memories. Uh, we could even set up a microphone if someone wants to share, you know, a memory with the group. Um, but again, uh, just gratitude for all of you making the trip over here. And with the weather here in Minnesota, you never know what it's going to be like. So thank you for making the trip over here to Columbia Heights. We ask that God to continually bless and strengthen each and every one of you as you press onward in this life's journey, staying close to the grace that comes from our Good Shepherd. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.